All right, let me start by saying good afternoon to everyone here in Baton Rouge. Good afternoon, y'all. Um, also, to those that are watching us live, I want to say welcome to the Israel of God Bible study class here in Baton Rouge, where we teach this Bible by subject and title. That's why we encourage people to take notes, because we do a lot of reading in here, a lot of reading. Reading for us today is our brother Devante, and uh, my name is Brother James, for those that don't know me. And in today's lesson, we'll be looking at two opposite ends of the spectrum as it relates to how we serve the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Kind of like that story in Mark 12 where the rich men came in, and of their wealth, you know, they dropped money in the, in the treasury. Then you had this poor widow come in. She dropped two mites. Then Jesus looked at his apostles and said to them, like, look, this woman gave more than they did because she gave all that she had. They just gave from their wealth. That's kind of like giving spare change. You don't feel that. And if you are not feeling any kind of sticking going on to yourself and serving the Lord, then maybe you might need to go relook at that because some sacrifice comes when you serving the true and living God. It's not an easy cakewalk, brothers and sisters. So I was moved to do this lesson because of some things that I happen to see and some things that I hear about going on uh, across the country in other IOG camps. Because uh, we, us brothers, we talk. A lot of us talk to each other throughout the week. And what you see is a lot of diligence, a lot of dedication when it comes to serving things of this world. You never miss work. If your car break, you're going to get somebody to come get you, take you to work. Okay? Everything. When your cousin having that party, you're going to get to that party. One of these comedians come into the River Center to do a, a comedy concert. You're going to get there if that's what you want to get to. You get all that dedication and commitment to these worldly things. But when it comes to this right here, it's you can only do it when it's comfortable for you. You do it when you say, it's, it's okay, I ain't got nothing else to do with it, and I can take care of that. But serving the Lord is not like that, brothers and sisters. It's not like that at all. If that's how you're doing it, then you're not doing it. it we, 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 it, we real quick and easy to bring the Lord the scraps and the leftovers from, what else, from other things that we have going on. But we're going to start this lesson in 1 Peter. Because the bottom line is we just live in this... Uh, microwave era where we looking for instant rewards from us doing something and since it looks like the lord ain't gonna hand out salvation tomorrow we feel like we have time to be lax in taking care of his business that's not the case we have people that's a part of this congregation that drive here for an hour and a half, two hours, every Sabbath day. Am I right? We got people that put that ride in every week. We got a couple of people that they on one of these cleaning crews. And they drive here an hour and a half just to come clean up this building. That right there should put something on some of our minds. We live right here and can't get here. The wind blow, you can't come to class. Your sister, baby, cousin, Tracy, had a car accident. You can't come to class. I mean, we just too lax in everything that we do when it comes to serving the Lord. But we diligent about this stuff of this world. And all of it's temporary. 
First Peter chapter two, my brother, we're going to start at verse 21. First Peter <laughs> two and 21. First Peter chapter two and verse 21. Go ahead and read. First of all, let me tell y'all the title of this lesson because I didn't tell you the title. I'm sorry. The title of this lesson is Commitment or Convenience. Commitment or Convenience. How do you serve? It's too much of this convenience stuff going on. Lack of commitment, lack of faith. First Peter 2 and 21. Go ahead and read, brother. For even hereunto uh -huh. were, were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, mm -hmm. leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. So it said Christ suffered for us, leaving us an example that we should follow his steps. Go ahead and read. Who did no sin, uh -huh. neither was guile found in his mouth. Go ahead. Who, even he was reviled, mm -hmm. reviled not again. Go ahead. When he suffered, he threatened not. He, he suffered? The Lord suffered, and he said he threatened not. Go ahead and read. But committed himself he, to him that judge it righteously. And right there, that's one of them steps that he took that we should follow. He committed himself. He committed himself, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and, and continue. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body mm -hmm. on the tree. Yes. That we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, mm -hmm. by whose stripes ye were healed. Okay, so now let's move on. Let's go to Matthew chapter 6. Because it said, even though Christ suffered, he was committed to completing the task at hand. He couldn't waver on that like we waver on stuff around here. Matthew chapter 6. We're going to start at verse 25. 6 and 25, my brother. 6 and 25. Go ahead and read. Therefore, I say unto you, mm -hmm. take no thought for your life, mm -hmm. what ye shall eat or what, what ye shall drink. Go ahead. Nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on. Mm -hmm. Is it not the life more than meat? Yes. And the body than raiment? Go ahead. Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, mm -hmm. neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. He said these birds, these fowls of the air that fly, say they don't uh, farm food and grow trees. Go ahead and read. Yet your heavenly father feedeth them. He said, yet the father feed them. He feed the critters. Go ahead and read. Are ye not much better than are they? Are ye not much better than these animals? So if, if the creatures are going to get fed, then you're going to get fed if you're handling God's business. But we like to do stuff back when we think we can fix everything. So you know, let me go take care of this and let me go take care of that. And I'm going to put God's business third. That's wrong. You put God's business first. I'm going to tell y'all something in my house. Even before I, and you can say, how many of y'all can tell me when last time I missed a Sabbath? Who can tell me when I missed? If you didn't see me here, I was at another camp somewhere. Be but before I started teaching, I didn't miss. I didn't miss. So you can't say, hey, I don't miss because I stand up here. This is serious business. And y'all take this stuff too lightly. What verse was that, my brother? Skip down to 28. Go ahead. 28. Go ahead and read. And why take ye thought for raiment? Uh-huh. Consider the lilies of the field. Uh-huh. How they grow. Mm -hmm. They toil not, neither do they spin. He said, consider the lilies of the field and how they grow. Go ahead and read. And yet I say unto you mm -hmm. that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. He said Solomon with all his glory and money and riches wasn't arrayed like these lilies. Go ahead and read. Wherefore, if God so clothed the, gra the grass of the field. He said if the Lord can clothe the grass of the field. Go ahead. Which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven. Uh -huh. Shall he not much more clothe you? Uh -huh. O ye little of faith. O ye little of faith. Go ahead and read. You know what? Skip down, my brother, to 33 and continue. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. Now, y'all need to pay attention to what the Lord is saying here. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Go ahead and read. And his righteousness. And his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. All what things? We started off talking about uh, give no thought to what you're going to eat, no thought to what you're going to drink. He's saying, hey, put the Lord first, and then you'll have all of that stuff 
with no problem. So now I'm going to go show y'all some. But before we do that, I want you to read. Um, I got some definitions in here. I'm going to find them. But, but let's go ahead and go to our next spot. Let's go to Exodus chapter 2. Exodus 2. Exodus chapter 2. And let's look at Moses. And let's look and see if Moses' thing was based on commitment or was it based on it being convenient for him. Let's go to Exodus chapter 2 and start at verse 16. Exodus 2 and 16. Exodus chapter 2. And verse 16. 2 and 16. Because Jesus told us, seek the kingdom first. 2 and 16. Go ahead and read, brother. Now the priests of Midian had seven daughters, and they came and drew water mm -hmm. and filled the troughs to water their father's flock. Okay. And the shepherds came and drove them away. Mm -hmm. But Moses stood up and helped them okay. and watered their flock. Go ahead. And when they came to Riel, their father, he said, How is it that they, ye, are come so soon today? Mm -hmm. And they said, An Egyptian delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds, uh -huh. and also drew water enough for us, and watered the flock. So they, so their dad asked him, How did y'all get back so early? They said, This Egyptian man came, and he helped us. So now, skip down to verse 21, my brother, and continue. And Moses was content to dwell with the man. So Moses went down there, and then it said Moses was content to dwell with that man. Go ahead. And he gave Moses Zippora, 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 his, Zippora, his daughter. Uh huh. And she bare him a son, and he called his name Gershom. Uh -huh. Gershom. Gershom. Go ahead. For he said, "I have been a stranger in in a strange land." So Moses, a stranger in a strange land, and we read it plainly. It said Moses was content to dwell with that man. The man gave him a wife. He doing what he do. He having babies. He's chilling. I guess he's probably taking care of the flock. But Moses ain't under no pressure. He's saying, I'm content to dwell over here with this man. So now, let's go on into that third chapter and pick it up at verse 1. 3 and 1. Chapter 3 and verse 1. What that say, brother? Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, mm -hmm. his father-in-law, yes. the priest of Midian, mm -hmm. and he led the flock to the backside of the desert okay. and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. Okay. The angel, and the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in the flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. Mm -hmm. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, mm -hmm. and the bush was not consumed. Okay, so now Moses is handling this man's flock. Like we said, he was content doing that. Now skip down to verse 7 because he saw this bush burning. And let's see what happened. So the Lord was speaking to him through this angel from this bush. Verse 7, go ahead and read. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people. What did he see of Israel? The, the affliction. affliction. Then the Lord told Moses, I've seen the affliction of my people. Go ahead and read. Which are in Egypt. Which are in Egypt. Go ahead. And have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. Mm-hmm. For I know their sorrows. Go ahead. And I and I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, uh -huh. and to bring them up out of the out of the land unto a good land, and a large unto a land flowing with milk and honey, uh -huh. unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the per Persiaites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. Go ahead. Now, therefore, behold. The cry of the children of Israel has come unto me, mm -hmm. and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. So now, so far, we see the Lord talking to Moses, and he's telling them, say, look, I see the sorrows of my people Israel, okay? And I hear their cries, and I see how they are oppressed down there in Egypt. Go ahead and read. Come now, therefore... And I, and I will send, send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. So now the Lord is asking Moses, the man who said he's content to dwell in Midian, to go back down there where he would be considered a slave. Do y'all see that? He would have to go back down there where he's considered a slave. Where some crying and some sorrowing going on. Go ahead and read, brother. And Moses said unto God, who am I? So this is the first time he tried to get out of it. He said, who am I? Go ahead and read. That I should go unto Pharaoh. Uh-huh. And that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt. Go ahead. 
And he said, certainly I will be with thee. So the Lord told him, I'll be with you. I just need you to go on down there, though. Go ahead and read. And this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee when thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt. Mm -hmm. You shall serve God upon this mountain. Now skip down to verse 18 and continue. And they shall hearken to thy voice, uh -huh. and thou shalt come, thou and the elders of Israel, unto the king of Egypt. So the Lord is telling Moses, the people going to listen to you, just go down there. But go ahead and read. And ye shall say unto him, mm -hmm. the Lord God of the Hebrews hath met with us, mm -hmm. and now let us go. We beseech thee three days journey into the wilderness, that we may sacrifice to the Lord our God. Go ahead and read. And I am sure that the king of Egypt will not let you go. No, not by a mighty hand. So the Lord is telling Moses, you, even though you're comfortable down here in Midian, I want you to go down there where you're going to be a slave, where there's sorrow, crying, taskmasters, whipping you, and then the Pharaoh not going to let you go. Do y'all see what we read here? So Moses was in a place where life was good for him. But now he's got to go put some work in. The Lord is asking him to do that. So now, and we saw already once he tried to get out of it. So now, let's go into the fourth chapter and pick it up at verse 1. Exodus 4 and 1. Go ahead and read. And Moses answered and said, But behold, they would not believe me, mm -hmm. nor hearken unto my voice. So now here go his second attempt to get out of this task. He told the Lord, the people are not going to hear me or listen to me. Go ahead and read. For they will say, the Lord hath not appeared unto thee. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto him, what is it that in thy hand? Mm -hmm. And he said, a rod. So he said, this is a rod in my hand. So now skip down to verse 8 and continue. And it shall come to pass, if they would not believe thee, neither hearken to the voice of the first sign, that they will believe the voice of the latter sign. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass, if they would not believe also these two signs, mm -hmm. neither hearken unto thy voice, mm -hmm. that thou shalt take of the water of the river mm -hmm. and pour it upon the dry land. Mm -hmm. And the water which thou takest out of the river shall become blood upon the dry land. Go ahead. And Moses said unto the Lord, O my Lord, mm -hmm. I am not eloquent. E eloquent. So now this is Moses' third attempt. He's giving the Lord reasons why he can't do this. He said... Oh, my Lord, I am not eloquent. That means he's not able to speak to the people. Go ahead and read. Neither heretofore, nor, the sense, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech and of, and of a slow tongue. So Moses said he's slow of speech and of a slow tongue. Go ahead and read. And the Lord said unto him, mm -hmm. Who hath made man's mouth, or who maketh the dumb, mm -hmm. or deaf, or the seeing, or the blind, have not I the Lord? That's right. Go ahead. Now, therefore, go, and I will be with, with thy mouth, and mm -hmm. teach thee what thou shalt say. So the Lord said, go ahead and go. I will be with your mouth and teach thee what to say. And the whole time, he's trying to let Moses know, I got your back. I'll be with you. Just go on down there. Go ahead and read. And he said, O my Lord, mm -hmm. sin, I pray thee. By the hand of him whom thou, thou wilt sin. Mm -hmm. and so the, now Moses telling him, send somebody else. He's still trying to get out of it. Send somebody else, Lord. Go ahead and read. And the anger of the Lord was kindled. So now the Lord Moses. got mad at Moses. Because you got, you got to understand something. Moses was in a, a spot of being content and happy and comfortable. Now you want me to get up out of here where I'm chilling? I got this woman. And I'm, I got children now, and I'm minding these animals, and you want me to come from a place of being a free man and go be a slave? To bring these hard-headed people out? Because they were part of the reason Moses had to get up out of there. Because they was going to snitch on him that he killed the Egyptian. Go ahead and read. And he said, is not Aaron the Levite thy brother? So the Lord said, hey, Aaron the Levite, that's your brother. Go ahead and read. I know that he can speak well. So he can speak well. Go ahead. And also, behold, he coming forth to meet thee. Mm -hmm. And when he seeth thee, he will be glad in his heart. Go ahead and read. And thou shalt speak unto him mm -hmm. and put words in his mouth. Go ahead. And I will be with thy mouth. Go ahead. And with his mouth and will teach you what you shall do. Okay, so now the Lord's still running it down, trying to convince Moses to go. So now, 
Skip down to verse 20 and read that. Verse 20, what did it say? And Moses took his wife and his sons. So Moses took his wife and his sons. And set them upon an ass. Uh-huh. And he returned to the land of Egypt. He returned down there where he was going to make him, his wife, and his children slaves. Go ahead and read. And Moses took the rod of God in his hand. So now, Moses went from being content to going down where he's going to have a little discomfort in his life. But he's handling God's business while he's doing it. So now, I want to read two definitions to y'all real quick before we continue. I'm going to read convenience first. The definition of convenience. The state of being able to proceed with something with little effort or difficulty. Y'all hear me? Synonyms of convenience is benefit, use, good, comfort, ease, enjoyment, satisfaction. So now I'm going to read the definition of commitment because the title of today's lesson is commitment or convenience. How do you serve the Lord? Commitment is this. I'm going to give y'all two, two state, two definitions and some synonym words, the state or quality of being dedicated to a cause or an activity. Definition number two, an engagement or obligation that restricts freedom of action. That's why Paul keeps calling himself a prisoner of God. Because once you start doing this, there's certain things that you must do and there's certain things that you cannot do. That's what commitment is about. So now, I'm going to give y'all some synonyms to commitment. Dedication, devotion, allegiance, loyalty, faithfulness, fidelity, bond, adherence, attentiveness, responsibility, obligation, duty, charge, liability, burden, pressure. That's what serving God smell like. That's what it tastes like. That's what it feels like. And that's what it looks like. And if you don't have any of those, you might need to go relook in the mirror. And see what you're doing. Because serving God ain't about what's convenient for you. We got people that they part of these cleanup crews. When it's their day, they don't show up. I ain't got no problem coming up here cleaning up in somebody else's spot when it ain't my turn to come up here. Because I'm on one of them crews. We used to have nine, ten people singing in the choir. How many was up there today? Four? We got this sister and this brother right here. And I hope they don't mind me saying so. They drive you an hour and a half to clean this building up. And we got people live right here, can't do nothing. Commitment looks one way. Convenience looks another way. And there's a lot of convenient serving going on, and it just ain't good enough. I don't care what you do, because what you do is between you and the Lord. You speak the vow and you break it, that's on you. I'm going to handle mine, and everybody should have the same attitude as some of these servants that we're going to look at in this Bible today. Then we're going to look at one that you shouldn't look at it like he looks at it. But you see Moses have a position of being content. And comfortable and went somewhere where he was going to be uncomfortable. But it's all handling God's business. Y'all think that when, when I get scheduled to go somewhere like uh, 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 Orlando or Houston or Dallas that I wouldn't rather be here with my family? Well, I got to go take care of that business. You think that I might not want to come up here and clean up on a Sunday morning? But I'm here. And y'all got to look at how you're doing things, brothers and sisters. This ain't about being comfortable. This is about the Lord said do it, you do it. Especially if you make the vow at your mouth, you're going to do it. And we're going to read on that today. Matthew chapter 16, I'm running my mouth. Matthew 16, let's go to the next spot. Matthew 16. And I mean Moses tried to get out of it. He said, who am I? Then he said, they won't believe me. Then he said, I'm not eloquent. Then he just said, you know what, Lord, just send somebody else in my spot. But he, but, but guess what? He ended up going anyway. 
And Moses became an intercessor for the people. Matthew chapter 16, let's pick it up at verse 21. 16 and 21. And I know Brother Duell over in Atlanta, you say all the time, if you comfortable, you're not serving God right. I used to say, let me, let me examine what that brother said. If you, if you are comfortable, you're doing something wrong. You got to feel what you're doing for the Lord. If you ain't feeling it, you might need to relook at that. It's got to cost you something. Like we're we going we gonna to read some how David looked at something. The man tried to, to get him to sacrifice some animals that he was just going to give to David. David said, man, I'm not going to sacrifice something to the Lord that I got for free. He said, I'm going to pay you for these animals. Then I'm going to burn them. Do y'all see what we talk about here? You got to feel your service for the Lord. And if you ain't feeling it, you might need to step it up a little bit. Matthew 16, 21. Go ahead and read, brother. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem uh -huh. and suffer many things of the elders. He must suffer many things of the elders. We read in Peter that he was committed to doing this thing. Go ahead and read. And chief priests and scribes and be killed mm -hmm. and be raised again the third day. Go ahead and read. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord. This shall not be unto thee. So the Lord is telling them what's supposed to happen. The prophets already told them that this is going to happen. Now here go Peter in his feelings. Lord, this ain't going to be so. Emotions in this thing. What the Lord say to him, my brother? But he turned and said unto Peter, uh -huh. get thee behind me, Satan. He called Peter Satan. Say, get get be behind me, Satan. Go ahead and read. Thou art an offense unto me. You have offended me. Go ahead and read. For thou savorest not the things that be of God. Because you don't savor the things that be of God. Go ahead and read. But those that be of men. Because you got your feelings in this thing. Your feelings ain't supposed to be in this. It's what thus said the Lord. And that's it. Like I've been talking to this one sister and showing her some stuff in the book. And she just finally told me the other day, she said, man, see, 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 y'all manipulating that Bible. See, 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 y'all, see, see, y'all, see, see, we serve, we serve Christ with two different ways. That's what she told me. And I say, well, it's because stuff I'm showing you, you never read it before. Never heard it before. And all her questions that she come to me with. And I'm going to have to stop talking Bible before I get fired. But look, she come to me with these questions with the stuff that they say. Like, well, what, what, they, what y'all teach as far as what a person got to do to get salvation? I said, we teach what Jesus said. Then I said, what y'all teach? Well, all you got to do is confess with your mouth. Then I said, well, we teach what Jesus said, what you have to do. And she said, what's that? I said, Get your Bible out and read Matthew 19, verse 16 and 17. Then she got her phone up and read it. Then I said, what Jesus said you got to do? She said, keep the commandments. And I walked off. I walked off. That's it. But everything she got to say to me, she said, well, what? She said, do y'all believe in speaking in tongues? I said, read 1 Corinthians 14 and 22. I probably shouldn't have went there, but that was a throat cutter. He just say speaking in tongues with them that believe not. And she said, man, y'all, y'all just, y'all manipulating the Bible. I, I, that's your Bible. You read out your phone. How I manipulate your Bible that's in your phone. But I'm going to stop talking to her. Because she's my supervisor. But um, at least by that, we just going to talk work from now on. I made up my mind in Monday. On Monday, and hope that fire in my bone don't spring up and get me fired. I'm going to keep it work-related. That's all. But anyway, where were we? Y'all haven't got lost in this lesson. Chapter we had the verse 24. Yeah. So Jesus told Peter, he, say, he said, you don't savor the things of God, but those of men. See, God thinks a different way from man. And just like me and Brother Graham were talking, it's like, look, the Lord showed you that when he didn't let Moses get into the, into the promised land. He said, I'm, I'm going to take you up on this hill, Moses. I'm going to let you look down in there, and then I'm going to kill you. 
See, one of us, we would have said, all right, Mo, you did all this good work. You put up with Israel for 40 years. We're going to let you go and slide on in there. But the Lord ain't like us. He don't think like us. And we got to stop thinking he thinks like us. We got to stop doing that. He told you, my thoughts are not your thoughts and my ways are not your ways. You got to stay committed and get on your job and do your duties or whatever it is you're going to do. So now. Go ahead and read, my brother. From the fourth. Uh huh. Then, then said Jesus unto his disciples, mm -hmm. If any man will come after me. He said, If any man going to come after me, go ahead and read. Let him deny himself. Let him do what? Deny himself. Let him do what, y'all? So, where do you stand in the grand scheme of things? He said, You got to deny yourself. Go ahead and read. And take up his cross uh -huh. and follow me. And that don't mean wear no cross around your chain. It just means deal with those things that make you uncomfortable to stay true to this word. Go ahead and read. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. He said it, but if you save your life, that means if you want to keep on doing the stuff you've been doing, and if you want to keep on hanging around the same people you've been hanging around, and if you can't let certain things go, and you still want to put the bacon on your cheeseburger, he said if you still want to save your life, you're going to lose your life. He's talking about the second death. Go ahead and read. And, whoso, and whosoever will lose his life. But whosoever will give up all those things in the name of serving the Lord in truth and in spirit. Go ahead and read. For my sake. For his sake. Shall find it. You're going to find your life. He's talking about eternal life. Y'all need to see that's plain. Go ahead and read. But what is a man profited? Mm -hmm. If he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul. Go ahead. Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Go ahead. For the Son of Man shall come in, the, come in the glory of his Father with his angels. Mm -hmm. And then he shall reward every man according to his works. According to what he say out of his mouth? According to his works. The Lord is going to judge every man and reward every man according to his works. So we need to be mindful of our body, our body of work, brothers and sisters, especially once you come into this knowledge. Uh, so now, let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 5. Jesus told us plain that you have to deny yourself. And like I said earlier, Paul kept saying he's a prisoner of God. Because certain things Paul want to do, he know he can't do them. Certain things you might have the urge to do, you just can't do them. I don't care how short her skirt was. I don't care how good that stack of money looked. You can't do these things. Ecclesiastes, chapter 5, verse 4. 5 and 4. Go ahead and read. When thou vowest a vow unto God. He said, when you make a vow to the Lord, go ahead. Defer not to pay. Go ahead. For he had no pleasure in food. He said, you better not decide not to pay that vow to the Lord because he don't have no pleasure in fools. Go ahead and read. Pay that which thou hast vowed. Pay that which thou hast vowed. Go ahead and read. Better it is that thou shouldest not vow. It's better that you don't make no vows to God. And I definitely don't do that. Go ahead and read. Then that thou shouldest vow and not pay. That you should vow and not pay. Go ahead and read. Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin. He said, don't let your mouth get your body in trouble. Go ahead and read. Neither say thou before the angel mm -hmm. that it was an error. Mm -hmm. Wherefore should God be angry at thy voice? He's going to be angry. Go ahead and read. And destroy the work of thy hands. And he's going to destroy the work of your hands. So if you wonder why some of your work getting destroyed, maybe you ain't keeping one of your vows to the Lord. And maybe he just reached down into your world and shook it up a little bit. I remember... I, can't, I don't know if I made a vow or not, but I said these words out of my mouth back in probably in the 90s at one point or another. I said, you know, you go in the barbershop, you're sitting around, you got 10 dudes and 10 brothers got 10 different views on how you're supposed to serve whatever God you serve. So in my head, there was a lot of mystery to it. Uh, uh, there was a serious lack of knowledge and understanding about this thing. And I just said, you know what? One day the Lord's going to show up and he's going to knock on my door. And he's going to reveal that truth to me. And, and the moment he does that, whatever he asks me to do, I'm going to do it. I said that out of my mouth. Back in the 90s, some 20 years ago, 20 some years ago, I said that. So. I'm trying my best to stick to that. That's why if one of these brothers schedule me to go somewhere, I go. 
I hear all the stories. I used to be on a road crew. Uh, and, and, and my wife can tell y'all, sometimes we'd be on the road five weeks out of six. And these weren't no short trips we were making. we drive to Buffalo. we drive from Chicago to Jackson, Mississippi. we drive to Minneapolis. These were not short trips. we drive to Memphis. So while the sun is down on a Saturday night, my family doing whatever. But I'm on the road trying to get back to Chicago. Wishing I could be with my family doing something else. But, hey, you got to take care of the Lord's business. So whenever I got asked to go, I went. I never said, no, I can't go. I have not said that. And if, and if I can help it, I'm not going to say it. And we have to have that attitude about whatever it is we decide to do for the Lord. Whatever it is we decide to do. If you come into this truth, hey, part of your commitment is keeping this Sabbath every day. Why this room ain't full? I remember one time we had eight, eight people in here. How we go to 30 the next week? Because somebody's not doing what they're supposed to do. We just have a holy convocation every Sabbath day. Anyway, let's continue. Let's go Deuteronomy 23. Because we read where uh, 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 Solomon told us that if you make a vow to the Lord, you have to keep that. Now let's go to Deuteronomy uh, chapter 23 real quick. Deuteronomy 23. And let's look at how Moses put that down. Deuteronomy 23 and 21. 23 and 21. Commitment or convenience? How you doing it? How do you do it? 23 and 21. Deuteronomy chapter 23 verse 21. Go ahead and read my brother. When thou shalt vow a vow unto the Lord thy God. He said when you vow a vow unto the Lord thy God. Go ahead and read. Thou shalt not slack to pay. Thou shalt not slack to pay that vow. Go ahead. For the Lord thy God will surely require it of thee. Say the Lord thy God will surely require that vow of you. Go ahead and read. And it will be a sin in thee. He said it'll be a sin in thee if you don't keep that vow. Go ahead and read. But if thou shalt forbear to vow, uh -huh. it shall be no sin in thee. Go ahead. That which is gone out of thy lips. He say that which is gone out of your lips. Go ahead. Thou shalt keep and perform. That you should keep that and perform it if it come out of your mouth. Go ahead and read. Even a free will offering. Even a free will offering. According as thou hast vowed uh -huh. unto the Lord thy God. Go ahead. Which thou hast promised with thy mouth. So now we got it out of Solomon and we got it out of Moses. If you saying you're going to do that, you got to do that. So now let's go to Isaiah chapter 6 and let's look at Isaiah. Let's see what Isaiah did. We saw Moses pick up and go from comfort into something that was inconvenient from him. How you go from being a free man to a slave voluntarily? Moses did it. Even though the Lord kept telling him, hey, I will be with you. And I don't think Moses really had to get in too deep in anything. But still, he was there. Isaiah chapter 6. Let's start at verse 1, my brother. Isaiah chapter 6. And let's pick it up. At verse 1, 6 and 1, because the Lord will hold us accountable for these vows that we make. Let's see if Isaiah going to make one. 6 and 1, go ahead and read. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon the throne, high and lifted up. Mm -hmm. And his train filled the temple. So the Lord was, so, so Isaiah had this vision. Go ahead and read. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings mm -hmm. with twain. He covered his face. So we see he saw these angels and they had six wings. Look, angels is not a little boy with a blonde afro with two wings and a, and a little thing, a halo on his head. That ain't no angel. Angel got four faces, one of an ox, a lion, an eagle, and a man. He got six wings, eyes on the wings. That's an angel. Okay? Go ahead and read. And with twain he covered his feet. Mm -hmm. And with twain he did fly. Go ahead and read. And one cried unto another and said, mm -hmm. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. Go ahead. The whole earth is full of his glory. Mm -hmm. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried. And the house was filled with smoke. Go ahead. Then said I. So, so Isaiah watching all of this. So what did he say? Woe is me. So Isaiah said, woe is me. Go ahead and read. For I am undone. He said, for I am undone. Why is that, brother? Because I am a man. Of unclean lips. He said, because I'm a man of unclean lips. Go ahead and read. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. And I dwell around people who got unclean lips. Okay? 
Go ahead and read. For my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. So now he see the Lord in this vision. Go ahead and read. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, mm -hmm. having a live coal in his hand. So the Lord said, I got a fix for your unclean lips. So here come an angel with, with a coal in his hand. Go ahead and read. Which he had taken with the tongues from off the altar. Go ahead. And he, and he laid it upon my mouth. And he laid that coal on Isaiah's mouth. Go ahead and read. And said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thy iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. Uh-huh. Go ahead and read. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who, and who will go for us? So the Lord asked this question. Who shall I send? And who will go for us? Go ahead and read. Then said I, mm -hmm. Here am I, send me. So it looks like didn't nobody make Isaiah say that, right? He volunteered. He said, Here I am, send me. Go ahead and read. And he said, Go. And tell this people. So the Lord told him, go and tell this people, Israel, go ahead and read. Hear ye indeed, uh -huh. but understand not. Mm -hmm. And see ye indeed, but perceive not. Go ahead. Make the heart of this people fat and make their eyes heavy. Their ears heavy. I mean their ears heavy. Uh -huh. And shut their eyes. Go ahead. Lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears mm -hmm. and understand with their heart. Go ahead. And convert and be healed. Go ahead. Then said I, Lord. How long? So Isaiah asked the question, Lord, how long? Go ahead and read. And he answered, until the cities be wasted without inhabitants. He said, until these cities be wasted without inhabitants. Go ahead and read. And the houses without man. Uh-huh. And the land be utterly desolate. Go ahead. And the Lord have removed men far away. And, and there be a great forsaken in the midst of the land. In other words, Isaiah, you're going to do this till you die. Because the Lord did all these things way after Isaiah's lifetime. So Isaiah went and talked to these people probably all the way up until he died. But now, let's go into the 20th chapter of Isaiah and see if he stayed committed to what he agreed to do. He volunteered to do that. The Lord said, who shall I send and who will go? And he said, here am I, send me. Isaiah chapter 20, let's pick it up at verse 1. 20 and verse 1, my brother. Isaiah 20 and 1. Go ahead and read. In the year that Tartan came unto Ashdod, uh -huh. when Sagan, the king of Assyria, sent him and fought against Ashdod and took it. Go ahead. At the, at the same time spake the Lord by Isaiah, the son of Amos, saying, Go mm -hmm. and loose the sackcloth from off thy loins. So he told Isaiah, Take this sackcloth from off your loins. Go ahead and read. And put off thy shoe from thy foot. And take the shoes off your foot. Go ahead. And he did so. And he did that. Walking naked. Walking how? Naked. Go ahead. And barefoot. So Isaiah walked naked and barefoot. <laughs> you can go look up. You got these guys on the internet saying, well, he wasn't really naked. The book say he was naked. The book say he took the sackcloth from off his loins and he took off his shoes. He was naked and barefoot. Go ahead and read. And the Lord said, like as my servant Isaiah had walked naked. So, go ahead. Naked and barefoot three years. For how long, my brother? Three years. So now, the Lord is trying to show Israel something right here. He said, just like my servant Isaiah walked naked and barefoot for three years. Go ahead and read. For a sign. For a sign. And wonder uh -huh. upon Egypt and, and upon Ethiopia. Go ahead. So shall the king of Assyria lead away the Egyptians, prisoners, and the, Egypt, and the, and the Ethiopians, captives, young and old, naked and barefoot, mm -hmm. even with their buttocks uncovered, to the shame of Egypt. Now, that looks like he was totally naked to me. But did Isaiah say, well, hold up, Lord. I, I know I told you I'm volunteering, but I can't do that one. He did it. But I'm just showing you that in, in the sixth chapter, he volunteered to do what the Lord wanted him to do concerning his people. And the Lord said, hey, man, take off your shoes, take off your clothes, walk around barefoot and naked for three years. And Isaiah did that. And I'm going to tell y'all, <clears throat> like I used to say all the time, I wanted to know the truth so bad, I said, you know what, if the, if the word of truth show up to me and it say I got to wear a pink high heel shoe on my left foot every Thursday, I'm going to wear that pink high heel shoe on my left foot every Thursday. That was just my attitude towards it. Some people are not pink high heel shoes on the Thursday kind of people. 
If it don't, if it don't look right or it just don't look like something they want, then they totally dismiss it. Like the person I was telling y'all that I was dealing with. This stuff don't look like what she been taught. She been taught all you got to do is say, hey, I confess Jesus' name and that's it. And then I'm going to talk in tongues and then that's it. But the, your book say something different and you dismiss that because it don't look how you want it to look. Don't sound how you want it to sound. That wasn't my mentality. I was looking for the absolute truth. And when the truth show up, I'm going to accept it just like that. However crazy it look, whoever get mad at me, who don't want to talk to me no more. And that has to be our attitude when it comes to serving the true and living God. You have to walk this walk yourself because whoever you try and impress, whoever you trying to not get upset at you, they don't have the power to save you. They don't have the money to ransom you. And they can't keep you from going in that fire and they don't have a kingdom to put you in. Nor a crown to give you. So now, we saw Isaiah. So now let's go to Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews 10. Because Isaiah's work for the Lord was not based on convenience. It was based on commitment. That was commitment that we saw. Hebrews chapter 10. And let's start at verse 23. 10 and 23. Hebrews 10 and 23, my brother. Go ahead and read. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith. He said, let us hold fast the profession of of our faith how brother without wavering without wavering without wavering without going back and forth with it go ahead and read for he is faithful that promise go ahead and let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works uh-huh not forsaking the assembling of ourselves he said and don't forsake the assembling of ourselves which a lot of people just forsake that and they just lightly esteem that like that's no big deal Ain't no big deal if I don't have no convocation. Okay. You want to think that? If you like fire, go ahead and keep thinking that. Go ahead and read. As the man, as the manner of some is, mm -hmm. but ex exhorting mm -hmm. one another. Exhorting one another. Go ahead. And so much the more as ye see the day approaching. Mm -hmm. For if we sin willfully. So if we sin willfully. After that. We have received the knowledge of the truth. Uh huh. There remained no more sacrifice for sin. Look here. Jesus already <laughs> sacrificed for the sin, and animal sacrificing is over. You're going to be your own sacrifice, brothers and sisters. You are your own sacrifice. If you sin willfully after you have received the knowledge of the truth, there's no more sacrificing for you. Go ahead and read, brother. 27. Uh huh. But a certain fearful looking. For judgment. So, but this is what you got to expect. A certain fearful looking for of judgment. Go ahead. And fiery indignation. And fiery indignation. We shall devour the adversaries. We shall devour, devour, I'm sorry, the adversaries. So now, let's go into Luke chapter 12. Because we read here, it says, Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. And even in the third chapter of Hebrews, it tells us to hold your confidence steadfast to the end. You got to hold on to this thing until the end. Luke chapter 12. Luke 12. And let's pick it up at 42. Luke 12 and 42. Luke 12 and 42. Luke 12 and 42. See, so you cannot willfully sin after you have received the knowledge of the truth. No more sacrifices. Verse 42. Go ahead and read. And the Lord said, Who then is that faithful and wise steward, mm -hmm. whom his Lord shall make ruler of his household, mm -hmm. to give them their portion of meat in due season? Go ahead. Blessed is that servant, whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Go ahead. Of a truth I say unto you, mm -hmm. that he will make him ruler over all that he hath. Go ahead. But... And if that servant say in his heart. But if that servant say in his heart. My Lord delayed his coming. My Lord going to delay his, his return. Go ahead. And shall begin to beat the men's servants. So now he's going to start mistreating the servants. Go ahead. And maidens. Uh-huh. And to eat and drink. And he's going to kick back and party and eat and drink. Go ahead. And to be drunken. And to be drunken. Go ahead. 
the Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him. So right when you expecting, when you not expecting anything to happen, that's when it's going to happen. You don't expect the Lord to come back, he come. You think you're going to have time to repent for that sin you committed? And what happens if you die in that sin? What happens then? Go ahead and read, brother. And at an hour when he is not aware and will cut and will cut him in sunder uh -huh. and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. He say, look, when the servant or uh, uh, when, when, when that Lord, when that servant's Lord come back, when the servant ain't looking for him to come and catch him out of the way, he will cut him asunder and appoint him his portion over in the same place where the other unbelievers are. Because that's all that's going to be in that fire, the ones who really don't believe. Go ahead and read, brother. 47. Mm -hmm. And that servant, which knew his Lord's will mm -hmm. and prepared not himself, mm -hmm. neither did, according to his will, mm -hmm. shall be beaten with many stripes. He's going to be beaten with how many stripes? Many. He's going to be beaten with many stripes because it said, hey, um, he knew what he was supposed to be doing. Go ahead and read. But he knew, but he that knew not. But the one that didn't know. And did commit things worthy of stripes. Uh-huh. Shall be beaten with few stripes. Y'all see that? It said, hey, he said, he did, he did not according to his master's will, which he knew. So he got many stripes. He said, but the ones that didn't know and didn't do them, they're going to get few stripes. Go ahead and read. Middle of 48. Mm -hmm. For unto whomsoever much is given. He said, for to whom much is given. Of him shall be much required. Of him shall be much required. Go ahead. And to whom men have committed much. Uh-huh. Of him they will ask the more. It's the same thing. The Lord is the same way on that. If you have this knowledge, you expect it to operate within having this knowledge and apply it. What good is it for you to have knowledge and understanding if you don't apply it? Especially, like I always say, if you out there trying to talk it to somebody. How does it look? You telling them. That they supposed to come here and have that convocation on the seventh day, and then they come and look at me, you and you not here. How does that look? You ain't walking the walk. You talking, but you not walking what you saying. So now, let's go into the 100th chapter of Psalm. Psalm 100. Psalm 100. Psalm 100. And this lesson is titled, Commitment or Convenience. How do you serve? Is your service to the true living God based on whether or not it's convenient for you. Like I tell my family, if you don't want me to come to one of your functions, plan it on a Saturday. And you definitely won't see me. Because I ain't coming to nothing you got on Saturday. I don't care what it is. I don't care what it is. That's why when I lost my uncle, my mom wanted me to do that eulogy. She planned the funeral on a Friday. And we hit them with so much book. I told my son, either they're going to want us to come back and do the rest of them or never again. And it seemed like it was never again because the rest of them got planned on Saturday. Okay? They want somebody to get up there and say so-and-so is in heaven, and I can't do that. I'm not going to do it. Psalm 100. Psalm 100. Let's start at verse 1. 101. Go ahead, my brother. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All ye lands. Yes, sir. Serve the Lord with gladness. Serve the Lord how? With gladness. You're supposed to serve the Lord with gladness. Go ahead and read. Come before his presence with singing. Yes, sir. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. That's right. It is he that hath made us. See, the Lord made us. We didn't make him, but we carry on like we made him. Like we can put any kind of tweaks and adjustments on the Lord that we want to. I know the Lord going to overlook this little thing I'm doing, so let me just tweak him. He's going to give me a one-week, a seven-day pass, and I can tear this up, and then I'm going to come back, and everything going to be all right. No, it's not like that. Go ahead and read. It says, it says, know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that have made us. Go ahead and read. And not we ourselves. Uh-huh. We are his people. That's right. And the sheep of his pastor. Go ahead. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Go ahead. And into his courts with praise. And into his courts with praise. Go ahead. Be thankful unto him. Uh -huh. And bless his name. Be thankful unto the Lord and bless his name. So now, let's go unto Jose, uh, uh, into Jose in the first chapter. He says, serve the Lord with gladness. In Psalm chapter 2, it says, serve the Lord with fear. Then it's saying, kiss the son, lest he be a little angry. 
You mean Jesus can get angry? Of course. All that wrath we can read about in this book. Hosea chapter 1. And let's see what Hosea did. Let's see if his thing was based on convenience. Hosea chapter 1. Let's pick it up at verse 1. Hosea 1 and 1. Hosea 1 and verse 1. Hosea 1 and 1. Go ahead and read. The word of the Lord that came unto Hosea, the son of Bere, mm -hmm. in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, uh -huh. Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah, uh -huh. and in the days of Jer Jeroboam, Jeroboam. Mm -hmm. the son of Joash, king of Israel. Go ahead. The beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea, and the Lord said to Hosea. So the Lord is getting ready to give you, I, uh, Hosea some instructions. What did he say, brother? Go. Take unto thee a wife of whoredoms uh -huh. and children of whoredoms. So now he said, you go and marry you a woman, a whorish woman. Go and marry her. Go ahead and read. But the land hath committed great whoredom, mm -hmm. departing from the Lord. But the Lord had him to do that to show him something, that, that the people were cheating on the Lord with false gods. Go ahead and read. So he went and took Gomer, the daughter of Dibleim, uh -huh. which conceived. And bear him a son. So now he didn't say, well, look, Lord, I, I don't know if I can go marry this, this whore's woman. You know, I'd rather give me a virgin, a, a nice woman like everybody else. But he went and did that. And then she gave him a son. Go ahead and read. And the Lord said unto him, mm -hmm. call his name Jezreel. Uh -huh. But yet a little while, and I will avenge the blood of Jezreel upon the house of Jehu. Uh -huh. And will cause to seize the kingdom of the house of Israel. So he did exactly what the Lord told him to do. Now skip down to verse 6 because the Lord is showing Israel something by the actions of Hosea. But what we went here to show you that Isaiah didn't kick against what the Lord had him to do. He did it. Skip down to verse 6 and continue. Go ahead and read. And she conceived again mm -hmm. and bare a daughter. And God said unto him, mm -hmm. call her name Laruamah, uh -huh. for I will no more have mercy upon the house of Israel, mm -hmm. but I will utterly take them away. And so the second child was called Laruamah, he said, which means I will no more have mercy on the house of Israel, but will utterly take them away. And that's why we over here right now. But the Lord is showing him something, showing the people something through him, but we are looking at Hosea's obedience, which was not convenient to him, to go and marry a whorish woman. Skip down to verse 8 and continue. Now when she had weaned Laruamah, mm -hmm. she conceived and bare a son. Uh -huh. Then said God, mm -hmm. call his name Loami, mm -hmm. for ye are not my people, mm -hmm. and I would not be your God. So now we see that he stayed with the woman at least long enough to have three babies. And I know you care, baby, what, nine months? So if you go three times now, he was with at least, what, 27, 30 months. So we see that. But this was not about what's convenient for this brother. This was about, I'm going to do what the Lord told me to do. Because no man in here wants to marry a whorish woman. We have a problem marrying a good woman to us. Am I right? We don't even want to marry the good sis. You know we don't want one like that. But anyway, let's move on. Let's go to Matthew chapter 22. Matthew 22. Matthew 22. And let's look at this. This is real simple, though. Matthew chapter 22. We're going to start at verse 34. 22 and 34. Matthew 22 and 34. We see Hosea walked around naked and barefoot. I mean, uh, Isaiah walked around naked and barefoot for three years. Hosea married a whore's woman. Moses went from being a content person down to a situation where he was among the slaves because the Lord told him to do it. And we can't even do little simple things the Lord wants us doing. Matthew 22 and 34. Go ahead and read, brother. But when the Pharisees had heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, mm -hmm. they were gathered together. We're talking Jesus. Go ahead and read. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question. Tempting him and saying, uh -huh. Master, which is the great commandment in the law? So they asked Jesus, which is the great commandment in the law? Go ahead and read. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. How with, much of your heart? All. Go ahead. And with all thy soul. And with all thy soul. And with all thy mind. Go ahead. 
This is the first and great commandment. He said, this one is the first and the great commandment. Go ahead and read. And the second is like unto it. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt love thy neighbors as thyself. Uh-huh. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. He said, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets, which is love the Lord with all your heart and love your neighbor as thyself, which is basically the Ten Commandments. So now let's go to Exodus 20 and look at the Ten. He didn't say love the Lord with half your heart. He said love with all your heart. And you show that love not by lip service, but by your actions. Your actions say it all. You don't really have to say a word. So John told us plain in 1 John chapter 2. And we are going to uh, Exodus chapter 20. John told us plain in 1 John 2. That we know that we know the Lord and we keep his commandments. And if you say you know him and you don't keep him. You are a liar and there is no truth in you. Exodus 20. Exodus chapter 20. In verse 1, because he said, love the Lord with all your heart, love your neighbor as yourself. On these two hang the law. So let's look at them. 20 and 1, go ahead and read. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt uh -huh. and out of the house of bondage. Go ahead. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Okay, that's number one right there. So now, is the Lord okay, brothers and sisters? With us having another God outside of him. Is he okay with that? So we can't do that, right? Okay, go ahead and read. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image uh -huh. or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above mm -hmm. or that is in the earth beneath mm -hmm. or that is in the water under the earth. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them uh -huh. nor serve them for I the... For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, mm -hmm. visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, mm -hmm. and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. He said, if you love them, you keep no commandments. But he said here, you can't have no images. So is he okay with us having images? No. He's not okay with that. I tried to tell a brother yesterday, I say, hey, brother, uh, can I ask you something? He said, yeah. I said, why you wear that cross, man? Oh, man, because I believe in Jesus, man. You know, he has some kind of little answer like that, you know, which you would expect. And I said, well, can I show you something? He said, yeah. So I went and showed him. I showed him this what we just read. And then I kind of went into some other stuff, and we looked at some other things, and I explained it to him. And he was like, oh, okay, then. So about three hours later, I walked back through. That chain was still hanging. <laughs> You know, not that I expected him to take it off, but I just had to tell him. You know what I'm saying? I'm compelled to tell him. I got to get that off me. That might come back on me where you walk through that garage and that brother with that chain and you didn't say nothing with that cross on it. But look, I'm coming here to Exodus 20 to show you. He said, you can't have no other gods and we all agree that we can't. He said, don't have images and we all agree that you can't have no images, right? Go ahead and read. Verse 7. Mm -hmm. Thou should not... Take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Uh -huh. For the Lord would not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. So is the Lord okay with us taking his name in vain, y'all? No. He said he would not hold the one guiltless that does that. So we got these first three commandments and we can agree that the Lord have no wiggle room for us on these first three. Right? Yep. Go ahead and read. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Uh-huh. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. Mm -hmm. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Mm -hmm. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. Uh -huh. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, mm -hmm. the sea, and all that in them is, uh -huh. and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day, and hallowed it. So the Lord blessed the seventh, the seventh day. He called it the Sabbath. He hallowed that day. He said, you got to keep it holy. You can't do no work therein. Go ahead and read. Honor thy father and thy mother, mm -hmm. that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Okay, so the Lord say, honor your father and your mother. Is there any wiggle room with that, brothers and sisters? Can we dishonor our parents? Can we? No. Y'all can talk to me. 
So you cannot dishonor your mother and your father. I want y'all to know that your, your relationship with your parents is representative of your relationship with the Lord. I want y'all to understand that. Because there was a time when you were two months old, you couldn't do nothing for yourself. Who did everything for you? They were like a God to you. Y'all need to understand that. You can't dishonor that person or those two people. Okay? So now, no wiggle room with that one. Go ahead and read, my brother. 13. Uh-huh. That should not kill. What about that one? Any wiggle room there? Is the Lord okay with us killing? No. Nope. Go ahead and read. That should not commit adultery. What about that one? He okay with that? No. Nope. Can you go into your neighbor's spouse? No. Go ahead and read. That should not steal. Those thou should not steal? We already know. He's not okay with that, right? Go ahead and read. That should not bear a false witness. Against thy neighbor. Is the Lord okay with you lying on your neighbor and bearing false witness? Is he okay with that? Oh. He's not okay with that. Go ahead and read. Thou should not cover thy neighbor's house. Uh -huh. Thou should not cover thy neighbor's wife. Mm -hmm. Nor his manservant. Mm -hmm. Nor his maidservant. Mm -hmm. Nor his ox. Nor his ass. Nor anything that is thy neighbor's. So the Lord is not okay with you coveting anything your neighbor has. Because you might end up stealing it. You might end up killing them to get it. Because that one thing leads to the next. So now, let's go into Leviticus 23 real quick. Because we agreed on nine of these ten, the Lord ain't gave you no wiggle room with these. Leviticus 23, let's pick it up at verse 1. Leviticus 23 and verse 1. 23 and 1. Leviticus 23 and 1. Leviticus 23 and verse 1. Go ahead and read. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, uh -huh. Speak unto the children of Israel. Now who's doing the talking here? Lord. Go ahead. And say unto them uh -huh. concerning the feast of the Lord, mm -hmm. which ye which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations. Go ahead. Even these are my feasts. So the Lord say these are his feasts, including today. Go ahead and read. Six days shall work be done, mm -hmm. but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest. He said the seventh day, which is today, which he called one of his feast days, is a weekly feast day, the Sabbath day. He said. On the seventh day is a Sabbath of rest. Go ahead and read. And holy convocation. And a holy gathering. Go ahead. You shall do no work therein. Uh-huh. It is the Sabbath. It is the Sabbath of the Lord. And it all is your the dwellings. Sabbath of who? Of the Lord. Go ahead. And all your dwellings. Uh-huh. These are the feasts of the Lord. These are the feasts of the Lord again. Even holy convocation. Even holy gatherings. Which ye shall proclaim in their season. You shall proclaim them in that season. Once a week you have a season to proclaim today. And that's to be here. So now, we looked at nine of them ten commandments. Well, we read all ten of them. But I asked y'all the question, is the Lord okay with you breaking nine of them? And you said no. So why are, we, why are we okay with thinking he's okay that you can break number four? Why? Huh? Nobody got no answers on that one? Well, let me tell y'all something. He's not okay with that. And if you don't have that convocation, you sinning. Are we reading this? Yep. James told you if you break one of them, you break all of them. Y'all need to understand that. You need to, you need to quit basing whether or not you come to church on whether or not it's raining outside. It's like we were getting ready to have a feast. By the way, y'all can be flipping to uh, Matthew chapter 15. We were getting ready to have a feast this before we moved into this building. And the brother said, man, you know what? I know I said I was going to do this here for the feast, but I can't come. I said, why not, man? Well, I got to go down the road. One of my partners is sick. I said, man, maybe you should do what the Lord said and have that feast day. Then when you go there, you can pray to the Lord for your partner because you were obedient. But now you're going to disobey then go hit the road? And think you're going to do some help? <sighs> Obedience is key, brothers and sisters. And it's about commitment, dedication. It's not about what's convenient for you, what you want to do. It's not about that, brothers and sisters. Look, Matthew chapter 15. Let's pick it up at verse 1. 15 and 1. Matthew 15 and 1. Matthew 15 and verse 1. Because people are deceiving themselves since the Lord don't swing down and bust your head the minute you do something wrong, you think you got away with it. That's not the case. You just get by for a little while. 15 and 1. Go ahead and read. 
Then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees, mm -hmm. which were of Jerusalem, saying, Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? Mm -hmm. But they wash not their hands when they eat bread. So now here they come bugging Jesus about his disciples breaking some traditions of the elders. Go ahead and read. But he answered and said unto them, mm -hmm. Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? Now that's a sin if you transgress the commandments of the Lord. He said, Why do you sin? Just to keep some traditions, which is a lot of people that do that. Go ahead and read. For God commanded, saying, mm -hmm. Honor thy father and mother. Uh huh. And he that cursed father or mother, let him die the death. Now we just read in Exodus 20 where it says, Honor your father and your mother, right? We just read that, right? Go ahead and read. But ye say. Then he said, But you say this. Go ahead. Whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, mm -hmm. it is a gift. Well, I'm giving you a gift, mom. I'm giving you this gift, dad. Go ahead and read. By whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. Uh huh. And under not his father or his mother. So now, since I'm giving you gifts, I pay your light bill, I come cut your yard every week. Now I can disrespect you and handle you how I feel like it. Now, Jesus telling the Pharisees, but this is what y'all say. Go ahead and read. He should be free. Uh -huh. Thus have you made the commandment of God of none effect. He said, by, by saying this, you have made the commandment of God, which honor your mother and father of none effect. Go ahead. By your tradition. With your traditions. Go ahead and read. Ye hypocrites. Uh huh. Well did Isaiah, he, Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, uh -huh. This people draw it not unto me with their mouth. He said, Isaiah prophesied that this people draw near to me with their mouth. Go ahead. And honored me with their lips. They do all that good old lip service. Go ahead. But their heart is far from me. But you can tell by their actions, their heart is far from me because they ain't doing nothing. Go ahead and read. But in vain. But in vain. They do worship me. They mean you worshiping Jesus for nothing. Go ahead and read. Teaching for doctrines. Uh -huh. The commandments of men. Because you got doctrines that's commandment of men. You got your stuff made that a man put on the table. Lip service. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 6. And you have people that know this truth. They ain't going to give you a bunch of lip service. They ain't going to do nothing. Hebrews 6 and 10. Hebrews 6 and 10. The older you get, the more fear you ought to be getting. You quit playing with God. Because I'm hoping and praying for some more time for me to clean my rap sheet up. Hebrews 6 and 10. Hebrews 6 and 10. My brother, go ahead and read. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love. He said, for God is not unrighteous to where he will forget your work and your labor of love. You're supposed to be serving the Lord with gladness. You're supposed to be more than willing to do anything you got to do to further this gospel, to further this truth, to do some work for the Lord. Go ahead and read, brother. Which ye have showed toward his name. Uh-huh. And that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. Go ahead. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence uh -huh. to the full assurance of hope unto the unto the end. He said, and we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope. That's what it's about. You trying to get them works in to where you have a full assurance that you can make that first resurrection. Because that's what we shooting for. But how can you play with the Sabbath day and expect to get into the Sabbath day? Because that's what Jesus' kingdom is going to be. A thousand years, which is one day to him, which he called his day of rest. That's what this day represents. How are you going to play with this day and expect to get into that day, which this day represents? You can't do that. Go ahead and read. Verse 12. Mm -hmm. That ye be not slothful. He said, don't be slothful. Go ahead. But followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. He said, but, 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 he said, but followers of those that who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Like we're going to read about Abraham. Go ahead and read. But when God made promise to Abraham, mm -hmm. because he could swear by no greater, uh -huh. he swear by himself, saying, saying, mm -hmm. surely blessing, I will bless thee, and multiplying, I will multiply thee. Mm -hmm. And so, after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. It, said, it says, Abraham obtained 
the promise. But you can go read in Hebrews 11, it said he hasn't received it yet, though. But he's just sitting back waiting on it because when the Lord busts them clouds open, Abraham, we know, going to get into that first resurrection. That's what we should be shooting for rather than uh, 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 saying we're going to do something and end up in that judgment line because you in that judgment line, you don't know how that's going to go. So now, let's see how Abraham obtained that. Let's go to Genesis 26 because it said Abraham obtained it. Let's see how he did it and see if we can do what he did. Genesis 26, Genesis 26, and let's start at verse 1, 26 and 1. Because if you got to stand in that judgment line, your work's going to come into judgment at that point. And boy, I'm telling y'all, just think about it should make you start shaking in your shoes. I know some of us, because I got some dirt. And I know I ain't the only one with some dirt. But if you make that first resurrection, it said the second death have no power over you. There's no chance you go to the fire if you make the first cut. Can we read that? We can read that. The second death have no power over you if the Lord declared, declare you a saint when he split them clouds and get back in. So we all should be shooting for that day because when you get in that line, then uh, it might be 50-50 or 40-60. 26 and 1. Go ahead and read. And there was a famine in the land uh -huh. beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. Mm -hmm. And Isaac went unto Ambiliad, king of Philistines. He went to Abimelech. Go ahead. Uh -huh. Unto Gerar. Go ahead. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt. Dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. So now the Lord came. He appeared to Isaac. Now skip down to verse 4 and let's see what he's telling him. Go ahead. And I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven mm -hmm. and will give unto thy seed all these countries. Mm -hmm. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Why is that, brother? Because that Abraham obeyed my voice. Wait a minute. We read in Hebrews that Abraham obtained the promise, right? And we see here that the Lord, this is the Lord witnessing on Abraham's behalf. He said, because Abraham obeyed my voice. Go ahead. And kept my charge. And kept my charge. Go ahead. My commandments. And the commandments. My statutes. And his statutes. And my laws. And that's how you obtain the promise. That's how you get that. So if you want it, then match yourself up with what Abraham did. And the Lord spoke that. So now, let's go into Leviticus chapter 22. Let's go to Leviticus chapter 22. Because we're going to go to Malachi, and Malachi is going to be uh, uh, addressing Israel and how they're handling business. But let's go to Leviticus because we got to get the fourth story first. So we'll know when we read what he's talking about, what he's talking about. Leviticus 22, let's pick it up at 17. Leviticus 22 and 17 because Malachi confronted Israel on a lot of stuff. Leviticus chapter 22 and verse 17. 22 and 17. Go ahead and read. And the Lord spake unto Moses saying, uh -huh. speak unto Aaron and to his sons and unto all the children of Israel mm -hmm. and say unto them, whatsoever he be of the house of Israel mm -hmm. or of the strangers in Israel mm -hmm. that will offer his oblation for all his vows mm -hmm. and for all his free will offerings, which they will, which they will offer unto the Lord for a burnt offering. Uh huh. You shall offer at your own without with a, with a male without blemish. He said, "You got to offer a male without blemish." Go ahead. Of the beeves. Uh huh. Of the sheep. Go ahead. Or of the goats. Uh huh. But whatsoever hath a blemish, that shall ye not offer. So he's telling Moses, tell him you can't offer an animal that got blemishes on it. It's got to have no blemishes. Go ahead and read. For it shall not be acceptable for you. Mm -hmm. And what's, and whosoever offered a sacrifice of peace offerings unto the Lord to accomplish his vow or a free will offering in beeves or sheep, mm -hmm. it shall be perfect. It shall be what? Perfect. It shall be what? Perfect. It shall be perfect. Go ahead and read. To be accepted, uh -huh. there shall be no blemish therein. There shall be no blemishes on these animals that you sacrifice unto the Lord. Go ahead and read. Blind mm -hmm. or broken or maimed, or having a wind, or scur scurvy, or scab, you shall not offer these unto the Lord. So you can't bring a, an animal, a beast to the Lord with any of these blemishes on them and try to burn them before the Lord. Go ahead and read. Nor make an offering by fire of them upon the altar unto the Lord. So now skip to 24 and read that. 
ye should not offer unto the Lord that which is bruised. So he can't be bruised or crushed or crushed or broken uh -huh. or cut. Neither shall ye make any offering thereof in your land. So now let's go to Malachi, that first chapter, and pick it up at verse 6. Because Malachi is going to confront Israel about how they doing things because it was convenient for them. You see what I'm saying? It's like, hey, instead of, it's like, why, you like, well, why I'm going to sacrifice my prized ox when I got one over here with a broke leg and he blind and can't, you know, I'm, let's burn that one. Let's do that one because it's convenient. We always looking for a convenient way to serve the Lord. But Malachi going to confront Israel on this wise. Malachi 1 and 6. 1 and 6. Go ahead and read. A son honoreth his father uh -huh. and a servant his master. Mm -hmm. If then I be a father, mm -hmm. where is my honor? That's right. And if I be a master, where is my fear? And that's the question. If God is your master, then why are you not scared of him? Why aren't you scared? And he's the one that controls whether or not you go into the fire or you get into the kingdom. Oh, or you just don't bleed that far. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead and read, brother. Said the Lord of hosts uh -huh. unto you, uh -huh. O priest, O priest, that despise my name. Y'all know Israel hate that name, Jesus. You can tell them God's name is any name you want to. You can pull up 20 names, but the minute you say Jesus, they're going to say, pump your brakes, brother. You have offended us with that name that start with the letter J. With all them yahs you were saying, we could ride with that. Yah this, yah that. Go ahead and read. And ye say, uh -huh. wherein have we despised thy name? Go ahead. Ye offer polluted bread upon well, my altar. Well, they offer polluted bread, go ahead. Upon my altar. Uh -huh. And ye say, wherein have we polluted thee? Uh -huh. And that ye say, the table of the Lord is contemptible. Uh -huh. And if ye offer the blind for sacrifice... Is it not evil? Then we read in Leviticus that you can't offer up a blind animal or broken or bruised or crushed. But Israel was doing that because they didn't want to put the good animals up there. They were looking for convenience instead of being committed and understanding that I have to bring my best effort to the Lord. I got to give him my best because by you giving him your best, that's proof to him that you are confident that he'll replace it more times over. But if you stuck in your fleshly brain, you will never get that. You will never get that. And you lacking in faith. Go ahead and read. And if ye offer the lame and sick, mm -hmm. is it not evil? He, and they offered the lame and the sick. He said that's evil. Go ahead and read. Offer it, offer it now unto thy governor. Uh -huh. Will he be pleased if, with if thee? You, if you offered it to a man on this earth, would he be pleased with that? If you gave him your, your leftover scraps, would somebody be pleased with that? So why you think the Lord is? Go ahead and read. Or accept thy person, uh -huh. said the Lord of hosts. Go ahead and read. And now I pray you, beseech God that he will be gracious unto us. Uh -huh. That this hath been by your means, mm -hmm. will he regard your persons, said the Lord of hosts. Go ahead. Who is there even among you that will shut the doors for nothing? Ain't nobody going to shut the door for nothing. They're not going to even open the doors for nothing. You got to give them something for them to do something. Man, why I'm going to go up there and clean up the church I ain't getting paid? Y'all hear me? Why I'm going to do anything if I ain't getting paid? It's got to be for something if I'm going to do it. See, that's that convenience definition that we was reading. Some satisfaction you got to get out of it in order for you to do that. You don't want the pressure of commitment. You, you, can't, you don't want to deal with the burdens of being dedicated to something. You want to halfway do it and get in, Lord, your scraps, leftovers. If you giving up scraps and leftovers, you really ain't giving nothing. Y'all understand me? If you giving scraps and leftovers, you ain't giving nothing. You might well keep your scraps and leftovers. Go ahead and read. Good or 10. Neither do ye kindle fire on my altar for no. You want everything you do, you want to get paid for. Go ahead and read. I have no pleasure the in Lord's, you. The Lord, I ain't got no pleasure in you. Go ahead. Said the Lord of hosts. Uh -huh. Neither will I accept an offering at your hand. Go ahead and read. For from the rising of the sun, even unto the going down of the same, my name shall be great among the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. And in every place in sense shall be offered unto my name. Mm -hmm. And a pure offering for my name shall be great among the heathen said the Lord of hosts. Go ahead. 
for ye have profaned it. But, but Israel have profaned the name of the Lord. Go ahead. And that ye say, the table of the Lord is polluted, mm -hmm. and the fruit thereof, even his meat, is contemptible. And it is contemptible because you just put whatever you want to put up there. Go ahead and read. Ye said also, mm -hmm. Behold, what a weirdness is it? Mm -hmm. And ye have snuffed at it, said the Lord of hosts. Mm -hmm. And ye brought that which was torn, uh -huh. and the lame... You brought all these torn and lame animals to sacrifice them to me. Go ahead and read. And the sick, and the sick ones... Thus ye brought an offering. Uh -huh. Should I accept this of your hand, said the Lord? Do y'all see what we read here? Malachi is putting this out there for Israel because they halfway doing, they doing this stuff wrong. Because in their mind, well, if I got a, a, a sheep that's going to die in two days anyway, I might well burn this one up there. Rather than giving him the best one that I got that, that do the best mate and I get the most babies from him. That's the one you burn. Then Lord will probably give you three or four of them just like that. But we have to believe that and look at it like that. Go ahead and read, brother. 14. Uh -huh. But cursed be the deceiver, which hath in his flock a male, mm -hmm. and voweth and sacrifice unto the Lord a corrupt thing. He said, cursed be the deceiver that sacrifice unto the Lord a corrupt thing. Go ahead and read. For I am a great king, mm -hmm. said the Lord of hosts. That's right. And my name is dreadful among the heathen. So now let's go to uh, let's go to uh, Second Samuel real quick and look at uh, 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 chapter twenty four, and we are gonna look at David here because I mentioned this earlier. So let's just go ahead and read it. Second Samuel twenty four. You supposed to bring the Lord your best effort, just like on these feasts when we prepare these meals for the feast. I really get tuned in to my meals. <laughs> I be mean, that I be cooking. I try to bring the best tasting, best whatever I can cook up here. I heard somebody say strawberry delight. <laughs> Second Samuel 24 and 1. Second Samuel 24 and 1. Oh, by the way, the brothers made sure that's going on the menu. Second Samuel 24 and 1. 24 and 1. Go ahead and read, brother. And again. The anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, uh -huh. and he moved David against them to say, Go, number Israel and Judah. Go ahead. For the king said to Joab, the captain of the host, which was with him. So, 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 so the Lord was mad at Israel, so he had David to go number Israel. Go ahead and read. Go now through all the tribes of Israel, mm -hmm. from Dan even to Bathsheba, mm -hmm. and number ye the people, that I may know the number of the people. Now see... He told Joab to go do that, but Joab, no, you're not supposed to count Israel. And he mentioned it to David, but he went on and brought a number back, but it wasn't a real number because it was two tribes he didn't even count because he knew you weren't supposed to count Israel like that. But the Lord wasn't mad at David. He was mad at Israel. He just wanted a reason to punish Israel. So he got the king to do something he wasn't supposed to do so he could be mad at the nation and have be justified in punishing the nation. Skip down to verse 10, my brother, and pick it up right there. And David's heart smote him after that he had numbered the people. That's right, because he knew he was wrong. Go ahead. And David said unto the Lord, mm -hmm. I have sinned greatly in that I have done, and now I beseech thee, mm -hmm. O Lord, take away the iniquity of thy servant, uh -huh. for, I have, for I have done very foolishly. Go ahead. For when David was up in the morning, the word of the Lord came unto the prophet, Gad, David's seer saying, uh -huh. go and say unto David, thus said the Lord, I offer thee three things. Choose thee one of them that I may do it unto thee. So the priest came to David and said, the Lord, so he got three different punishments for you. You just pick one, multiple choice. Go ahead and read. So Gad came to David and told him and said unto him, mm -hmm. shall seven years of famine come unto thee? Unto thee in thy land, uh -huh. or would thou flee three months before thy enemies while, thou, while they pursue thee? Uh -huh. Or that there be three days pestilence in thy land? Uh -huh. Now advise and see what an answer I shall return to him that sent me. So Gad say, you choose David so I can go back with, with, with your choice. Go ahead and read. And David said unto Gad, mm -hmm. I am in a great strait. Let us fall now into the hand of the Lord, mm -hmm. for his mercies are great. For his mercies are great. And let me not fall into the hand of man. So I guess he was, in a way, picking one because he didn't want to fall in the hand of man. So he was, I guess he was saying, let the Lord drop that pestilence on us for three days. 
but go ahead and read. So the Lord sent the pestilence upon Israel from the morning even unto the time appointed. Uh -huh. And there died of the people from Dan even to Beersheba 70,000 men. So 70,000 men died. So skip down to verse 18 and continue. And Gad came that day to David and uh -huh. said unto him, Go up, rear an altar unto the Lord in the threshing floor mm -hmm. of, of Aruna, uh -huh. the Jebusite. Go ahead. And David, according to the saying of Gad, went up as the Lord commanded. Okay. And Aruna looked and saw the king and his servants coming on toward him. Mm -hmm. And Aruna went out and, and bowed himself before the king on his face upon the ground. Uh-huh. And Aruna said, Wherefore is my Lord the king come to his servant? So he's on the Jebusite to ask David, what's his purpose for coming there? Go ahead and read. And David said, to buy the threshing floor of thee, mm -hmm. to build an altar unto the Lord, that the plague may be stayed from the people. So he said, I come to build his altar, to do a sacrifice, so the Lord will stop that pestilence, the killing that's going on of, of the people. Go ahead and read. And Arunah said unto David, let my Lord, the king, take and offer up what seemeth good unto him. Uh -huh. Behold, here be oxen for burnt sacrifice and threshing instruments and other instruments of the oxen for wood. So now this Jebusite is telling David, I got some animals that you can sacrifice. I got these instruments. I even got wood. You can take whatever you like and just go ahead and do this sacrifice. Now, skip down my brother, verse 24, and let's see what David said about that. And the king said unto Aruna, uh -huh. Nay, but I will surely buy it of thee at a price. Neither will I offer burnt offerings unto the Lord my God of that which do it cost me nothing. So, so David said, no. He said, I'm going to buy this stuff from you for a price. And then I'll make an offer because he said, I'm not going to sacrifice some to the Lord that's going to cost me nothing. Do y'all see what David is saying here? See, when you serve in the Lord, right, you're supposed to feel it some kind of way. It's not supposed to be some light thing. You're supposed to feel your service to the Lord. Do y'all hear me? Let me tell y'all something. This week, I've been wearing some steel toe shoes, and they real heavy. And they and by, by, by yesterday evening, I mean, I was dead tired. But I came right on up here last night to make sure everything was right. I came up yesterday evening. Well, by the time I left, it was dark, but I, but I was dead tired. I was feeling that thing when I was up here in my body. Y'all hear what I'm saying? So when you, when you, when, when this, when you're doing some service to the Lord and it's light and you ain't feeling it, it ain't, it ain't no pressure to you at all. You might want to relook at that. You might want to add something to your list. Maybe you can handle something else. Maybe you can handle another job for the Lord. Take on some more. So David said right here, I am not going to make a sacrifice to the Lord, something that I got for free. I'm going to pay you, then I'll burn it. Go ahead and read, brother. So David bought the threshing floor and the oxen for 50 shekels uh -huh. of silver. Go ahead. And David built there an altar unto the Lord and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings. So, the Lord, so David, he paid for him, he burnt him. Go ahead and read. So the Lord was entreated. And the Lord was entreated on David's uh, sacrifice because he knew David had the right heart, the right attitude towards this thing. Go ahead and read. For the land uh -huh. and the plague was stayed from Israel. And the Lord stopped the plague. So now, let's go into Romans chapter 8. Romans 8. And then we just have uh, five more spots after this here. Romans chapter 8. Romans 8. Because we do a whole lot in this world, and we put that energy in. We even speed down Florida Boulevard to make sure we hit that clock on time. I'm talking about myself when I said that. But guess what? I'll speed down Florida to make sure I'm here on time, too. I'm just put that diligence in whatever it is I'm doing. Y'all hear what I'm saying? But I'm definitely not going to give you a slack version of what I'm supposed to be doing as far as serving the Lord. If I'm supposed to be standing up here, I'm going to stand up here. And if I'm not standing up here, I'm going to be sitting out there somewhere. Romans 8 and 14. 8 and 14. Read that, my brother. 
For as many as are led by the Spirit of God. So if you led by the Spirit of God, go ahead. They are the sons of God. It says if you are led by the Spirit of God, you the son of God. Skip down to 16 and continue. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit uh -huh. that we are the children of God. Go ahead. And if and if children and if you are children of God, go ahead. Then heirs, uh -huh. heirs of God, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. And you are joint heir with Christ. Go ahead and read. If so be that we suffer with Him. If we do what? Suffer. You mean this ain't gonna be smooth? You mean this is not peaches and cream? Every now and then, you're going to get a little sting, brothers and sisters. This ain't no smooth cakewalk. Go ahead and read. That we may be also glorified together. That we may be also glorified together. Go ahead and read. For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. He said, the suffering that you're feeling right now can't even compare to the glory you can get if you get into that kingdom. Because you become God, you get all power, and you with the Lord. What suffering could you go through right now that wouldn't be, you, that reward ain't good enough for that suffering that you got to deal with here. So now, let's go to uh, 1 Samuel chapter 2. 1 Samuel chapter 2, and then we just have four more places. 1 Samuel chapter 2. 1 Samuel 2. And let's look at how Eli dealt with the situation Looking at it from a man's point of view and looking at it from a, a position of what's convenient instead of being committed. Because we have to understand something, sisters and brothers. A little leaven would do what? A little leaven would leaven a whole lump. If you let sin proceed forth, if you let weakness proceed forth, it's just going to spread throughout this thing. And you got to deal with it. 1 Samuel chapter 2. Let's start at verse 22. 1 Samuel 2 and 22. Go ahead and read. Now Eli was very old mm -hmm. and heard all that his sons did unto all Israel. Uh -huh. And how they lay with the women that assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. So now Eli's sons, not only were they gangster in the sacrifice meat from the people, they were laying with the sisters at the gate of the tabernacle. Do y'all hear me? You can go back and read this story on your own. Those dudes were some kind of wicked. Go ahead and read, brother. And he said unto them, mm -hmm. Why do ye such things? For I hear of your evil dealings by all these people. So, he, so Eli went to him and asked him why they doing it. Because he'd been hearing about it. Go ahead and read. Nay, my sons, for it, for, it, for it is no good report that I hear. Ye make the Lord's people to transgress. Uh huh. If one man sin against another... The judge shall judge him. Well, look, he told him in verse 24, he said, you make the Lord's people to transgress because y'all transgressing. The priest sinning. Go ahead and read. But if a man sin against the Lord, who shall entreat for him? Uh -huh. Notwithstanding, they hearken not unto the voice of their father. He said they didn't listen unto their father's voice. Go ahead and read. Because the Lord would slay them. Because the Lord already had it in his plan that he was going to deal with these brothers. Go ahead and read. And the child Samuel grew oh, I'm on. sorry. Skip to verse 27 and continue. And there came a man of God unto Eli uh -huh. and said unto him, Thus said the Lord. So here come this man of God come to Eli saying, Thus said the Lord. Go ahead. Did I plainly appear unto the house of thy father? Talking about Levi. Go ahead. When they were in Egypt in Pharaoh's house. Uh huh. And did I choose him out of all the tribes of Israel to be my priest mm -hmm. to offer up on my altar? To burn incense, in, to wear an ephod before me. Uh huh. And did I give unto the house of thy father all the offerings made by fire of the children of Israel? He's just basically telling them, We gave you and your family the job of doing the service of God from out of all the tribes of Israel. We picked your family. Go ahead and read. Well, for kick ye at my sacrifice. Wait a minute. He said, Why are you kicking at my sacrifice? But this is the man of God, and he came to Eli, not Eli's sons. He came to Eli. He said, why? He said, wherefore kick ye at my sacrifice? Go ahead. And at my offering, uh -huh. which I have commanded in my habitation, uh -huh. and honorest thou sons above oh, me. Oh, that's where the problem is. You honored your sons above the Lord. Go ahead and read. To make yourselves fat with the chief, chiefest of all the offerings of Israel, my people. Uh, so he said, hey. 
you made yourself fat and you honored your sons above honoring the Lord. And that should be a lesson to us, brothers and sisters. We can't let our children, our spouses, our parents, or whoever it is, we cannot put them before serving the Lord. Because you're really going to make yourself a big mistake if you do that. Skip down to verse 31 and continue. Go ahead and read. Behold, the mm -hmm. days come that I will cut off thy arm. So now that he's, so the man of God is still talking to Eli. He said, the days coming where I'm going to cut off your arm. Go ahead. In the arm of thy father's house. Uh -huh. That there shall not be an old man in thy house. It ain't going to be no old man in your house. That means no man in your family down through the years through your lineage is going to grow old. Everybody going to die young. And we all know families like that. We know some families that people live long too. Don't we, Brother Cruz? But the Lord told Eli, I'm going to cut your house off like that. Go ahead and read, brother. And thou shalt see an enemy in my habitation, mm -hmm. and all the wealth which God shall give Israel. Mm -hmm. And there shall not be an old man in thine house forever. For how long? Forever. Forever. Go ahead and read. And the man of thine whom I shall not cut off from my altar mm -hmm. shall, shall be to consume thine eyes and to grieve thine heart. Uh -huh. And all the increase of thine house shall die in the flower of their age. So you're going to die in the early age. I remember watching the news last year. There was a lady down. Of her sons killed before the age of 30. You remember that? These boys was like between the ages of 19 and 25. All of them got killed. The only three sons her and her husband had, the only children they had. Not one of them alive right now today. No, that's a stinger. Well, what verse is that, my brother? That was the end of 33. Go ahead and read. And this shall be a sign unto thee uh -huh. that shall come upon thy two sons. He said, and this shall be a sign unto you, and that shall come upon your two sons. Go ahead. On Hophni uh -huh. and Phinehas. Uh -huh. And one day they shall die, both of them. He said, one day they're going to die. That's a sign. And that definitely happened. If you come back and read this story, Eli was sitting back. Somebody came and told him both your sons got killed. And the Lord did that. But Eli, the Lord told him that, hey, you honored your sons above me. And we can't make that mistake as parents, as spouses, as siblings, as children of mothers and fathers. You can't honor nobody before the Lord, brothers and sisters. If, if you doing something for them, get in the way of you dealing with God's business, you are in error. That's plain and simple. So now, let's go to Psalm chapter 50. We just have three more spots. Psalm 50. Because uh, we like to go to this spot right here, just put something on your mind, because Hobney and Phineas was getting away with that stuff clearly for a while. So I guess they thought it was cool. The Lord overlooked it. He going to let them get, on, get away with that. Psalm 50, let's pick it up at verse 14. 50 and 14. Psalm 50. Verse 14, go ahead and read. Offer unto God thanksgiving. He said, offer unto the Lord thanksgiving, go ahead. And pay thy vows unto the Most High. And you high. better pay your vows to the Most High. We read that earlier. Go ahead and read. And call upon me in the day of trouble. And if you making your vows to the Lord and you paying what you owe to the Lord and paying your vows, he said, call upon me in the day of trouble, go ahead. I will deliver thee. And I will deliver you. And thou shalt glorify me. And then you can glorify me. But go ahead and read. But unto the wicked. But God unto the wicked. God said. Uh -huh. What has thou to do to declare my statues? Or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth. Now he's talking to the wicked. Go ahead and read. Seeing thou hatest instruction. Seeing that you hate instructions. And casted my words behind thee. And you cast all my words behind you. Go ahead and read. When thou sawest a thief. Uh -huh. Then thou consented with him you saw somebody stealing doing wrong you consented with them go ahead and read and has been partaker with adultery and you've been partaker with adultery and sometimes we some of us find ourselves this way we see somebody doing something wrong and we just don't tell them they wrong you can't consent with wrong doing brothers and sisters go ahead and read then give us thy mouth to evil and then you give your mouth to evil and thy tongue frame it deceit go ahead Thou sittest and speaketh against thy brother. Uh huh. Thou slanderest thy own mother's son. And then it says, You give your mouth to evil, you frame deceit, and then you speak against your own brother. Go ahead and read. These things hast thou done, and I kept silent. The Lord said, You did all these things, and you did several others, and I kept silent. Go ahead and read. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such 
and one as thyself. He said, the Lord said that you thought that I was all together just like you. Go ahead and read. But I will reprove thee. But I will reprove thee. And set them in order before thy eyes. Go ahead. Now consider this. Uh -huh. Ye that forget God. He said, now consider this. All you people that forget about God. Go ahead and read. Lest I tear you in pieces. Uh -huh. And there will be none to deliver. Because when the Lord set his sights on you and start tearing you in pieces, can't nobody deliver you out of that trouble. You just got to suffer with that. But just because you were getting by with that, don't mean you're going to get away. The Lord is not like us. Go to Galatians, my brother, chapter 1. Galatians 1. Then we just have two more spots. Just because you're getting away with it. Just, see, like I was saying, we live in this world of, of, of instant. Even when you go to these little stores and restaurants, they got the little instant win. You peel the thing off the cup, you win a small fry or something. You know, we just everybody just want instant gratification, instant payment, instant everything right now. And just because you're not being rewarded, you think you can slack up? Just because the Lord hasn't brought no punishment on your wrongdoing today, you think you can keep on doing it? It's not like that. It's not like that. Sometimes the Lord give us room to repent and get it right. That's why we have to give each other room to repent and get it right. We have to give each other room. I can't afford to take this stuff personal. I can't do it. Galatians 1 and 10, my brother, 1 and 10. Now look at what Paul said right here. Go ahead and read. Or do I now persuade men or God? Uh-huh. Or do I seek to please men? So he said, do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? Which is what we saw Eli. Eli didn't even touch his sons. But he should have handled it how Joshua handled Achan when Achan stole the silver and the gold from Jericho. He had to bring Achan out, all his animals, all his kids, his wife, his tent, and everything he had in the whole assembly stoned him to death. Because that one sin in Israel, a little leaven, leaven that whole lump. And that's how the Lord had them deal with that back in them days. Hey, you get rid of sin out of you where everybody see it because it's a sign to them that if I do this, this can happen to me. It was, it was, it was great teaching points. It was a great deterrent to keep people from doing stuff that they shouldn't have been doing. But go ahead and read, brother. Ten. Uh -huh. For if I yet please men. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. What verse was that? Verse 10? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. For if I yet please men. So Paul said, for if I yet please men, go ahead. I should not be the servant of Christ. He said, I ain't no servant of the Lord if I'm seeking to please men. And that should be our attitude as well. So now, let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 1. 2 Corinthians 1. And then we just have one more spot. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. 2 Corinthians 1, let's start at verse 5. 1 and 5. Because commitment is about a little pressure. It's about being a little uncomfortable. It's about doing something that you're going to feel. It's about doing something that's going to cost you a little something. But if you serve the Lord by convenience, then you ain't doing nothing. You can keep that. You can keep them secondhand scraps. You can keep those leftovers. 1 and 5. Go ahead and read. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, uh -huh. so our constellation also abounded by Christ. Go ahead. And whether we be afflicted, it is for your constellation and salvation. He said, whether you be afflicted, he said, it is for your consolation and for your salvation. Go ahead and read. Which is effectual uh -huh. in the enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffer. See, we're talking about suffering here. Not that nobody wants you to suffer and be in pain. We're just saying that if your service to God ain't causing you nothing, then what are you doing? Go ahead and read. Or whether we be comforted. Mm -hmm. It is for your constellation and salvation. So if you have to give up something... If you have to give a little extra time, if you have to put a little extra energy in, you're going to get you're going to get the best payment of all the best retirement plan ever made available to man. And that is life eternal in the kingdom with the Lord. That's your payment. Go ahead and read. Seven. And our hope of you is steadfast. Yes. Knowing that as ye are partakers of the sufferings. So shall ye be also of the constellation. So, hey, look, so he's making it clear that if you're going to get that crown, a little suffering going to come with you getting it. Didn't Christ suffer? Have y'all ever gave thought to how he suffered? How they put the crown of thorns on his head? 
And then they took that reed out of his hand and started beating him across his head. Y'all know when they started hitting them, them thorns were sticking into his head. And then they hung him up there on that cross. And then once the guy come up there, once he died, the guy come up there and poke him with that spear. And then blood and water come out. That's when your salvation was made available to you. But y'all got to understand the Lord suffered. He was beaten. People spit on him. They slapped him. But we can't even come up here and do something for 15 minutes. Something wrong with that. It's almost like you want everything to be done for you and you can't do nothing. It's like to get a paycheck, you got to go work for that. You think you, you, you don't have to work for some salvation? I don't get that. You know what? I'm sorry, y'all. I, I, I forgot about one spot. Let's go to uh, 2 Corinthians 12. Then we have one more spot left. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Then we have one more spot after that. I'm sorry. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. 2 Corinthians 12. And let's pick it up at verse 2. 2 Corinthians 12 and 2. 12 and 2. Go ahead and read, brother. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago. Uh -huh. Whether in the body, I cannot tell. Mm -hmm. Or whether out of the body, I cannot tell. Mm -hmm. God knoweth. Such and one caught up to the third heaven. Uh -huh. Now skip down to verse 5 and continue. Of such and one will I glory. And then he, Paul is saying, of that one, that's who I'm going to glory in, the Lord. Go ahead and read. Yet of myself, yet I will of not my, glory. Yet of myself, go ahead. I will not glory. Uh -huh. But in my infirmities. He said, but in my infirmities. So Paul has some infirmities. Go ahead and read. For though I would desire to glory, uh -huh. I should not be a fool. Uh -huh. For I would say the truth, but now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be okay or that he heareth of me so paul said he got these infirmities which he's suffering through and he said for though i would desire the glory i shall not be a fool for i say the truth but now i forbear lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be because y'all even see these preachers out there they lift these guys up so high and they worship and giving them all this reverence and respect I ain't call, I'm calling you Mr. John. Calling you no reverend. Go ahead and read, brother. Seven. Unless I should be exalted above measure. He said, unless I should be exalted above measure. Go ahead. Through the abundance of the revelation. Through all them revelations. See, the Lord taught Paul by revelation for three years. Go ahead and read. There was given to me a thorn in the flesh. But also with that knowledge. The Lord gave him a thorn in the flesh. Some people speculate it was his eyesight. Some say it was other things. But Paul had an issue that he was dealing with, that he suffered with the whole time until he died. Go ahead and read. The messenger of Satan to buffet me, uh -huh. lest I should be exalted above measure. And that was probably the, uh, for, for payback for them things he did. He just took his medicine. And sometimes the Lord will drop some of these things on us just to keep you humble, let you know you're not perfect. Let you know that you human like everybody else. And at any moment, I could turn that switch and turn this problem up on you if you get above yourself. Go ahead and read. For this thing, I besought the Lord thrice. And Paul say for this problem that he was suffering with, he besought the Lord three times. Go ahead and read. That it might depart from me. That, that, that the Lord might take that thing from him. Go ahead and read. And he said unto me. My grace is sufficient for thee. And the Lord told Paul, my grace is sufficient for you. Go ahead and read. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. That's right. Go ahead. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Go ahead. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities. He said, I take pleasure, therefore, in these infirmities. Go ahead. In reproaches. In reproaches. In necessities. Yes. In persecutions. In persecutions. In distresses. And in distresses. For Christ's sake. For Christ's sake. Go ahead and read. For when I am weak, uh -huh. then am I strong. So, so there you go. So we see that Paul suffered, but we see all of this stuff is doing this walk. You go run into some stuff. It might not be sweet. It might not be sprinkled with sugar. It might not be comfortable, but you still got to toe the line. You still have to do it. So now let's go to our last spot. Second Timothy. Second Timothy chapter four. We have to get wrapped up into handling God's business and being steadfast in that until the end. Whatever it is we're doing, 
without wavering and just be committed to it. Second Timothy four and one, second Timothy chapter four, verse one. This is our last place. Four and one. Go ahead and read. I charge thee therefore before God uh -huh. and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his, at his appearing in his kingdom. Go ahead. Preach the word. Uh huh. Be instant in season, out of season. He said, preach this word and be instant in season and out of season. Go ahead. Reprove. Uh huh. Rebuke. Exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Skip down to five and continue. But watch thou in all things. Endure afflictions. He said, endure your afflictions. Go ahead. Do the work of an evangelist. Uh -huh. Make full proof of thy ministry. Mm -hmm. For I am now ready to be offered. So this is Paul talking. He said, make full proof of your ministry. And he said, now I'm ready to be offered. Go ahead. And the time of my departure is at hand. Uh -huh. I have fought a good, fault, yes. a good fight. Uh -huh. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. So now we all want to be able to say that if we end up dying before the Lord comes back. We want to be able to say, hey, I fought a good fight. I finished my course and I have kept the faith. We all want to be able to say that. Go ahead and read. Henceforth, uh -huh. there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, mm -hmm. which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. Mm -hmm. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. And we all want to be able to know and believe in our hearts if we die before the Lord return, that we know that we put that work in, we didn't waver, we held fast, we held strong, and we fought the fight, and we got a crown waiting on us. We all want to feel like that. But we have to get that assurance by not wavering off the course of the things that we know we're supposed to be doing daily and weekly and, and annually and these memorials that we do every year. We have to stay on those courses, brothers and sisters. So this title was Commitment or Convenience. And we're supposed to serve the Lord on a commitment level, not based on if, if it's convenient for me to do this or not, but on some commitment. I hope somebody was edified and I thank you for your time.